Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, UK government announces strict tier 3 lockdown measures in London. A top claw factory has reported that a worker has died due to COVID-19. More than 5,000 women and children are reported to have been missing in Peru this year. And in our video section, we look at the continuing farmers' protests in India. In our first story, the United Kingdom government has issued orders to impose tier 3 restrictions in London and surrounding areas starting from December 16th. The announcement was made as the country witnessed a record high in new COVID-19 cases on December 14th. Starting from December 16th, all restaurants and cafes will be shut down and strict limits will be set on social gatherings. Local councils in and around London had initially opposed the Tier 3 measures. Saqib Khan, the mayor of London, stated that the move would be incredibly harmful for business. The lockdown has also raised concerns about potential job loss ahead of Christmas. Trade unions are now demanding that the government boost its efforts to help workers during this period. However, the UK government has also overruled the decision made by local councils to shut down schools as Tier 3 measures come into force. The government has stated that keeping schools open is to help compensate for the months-long loss of education during the previous phase of lockdown. The new Tier 3 measures are being put in place a few days after the UK began administering the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. However, the British government is set to relax restrictions for a five-day period starting from December 23rd to allow households to meet over Christmas. However, a joint statement issued by the British Medical Journal and the Health Service Journal has warned that lifting restrictions may worsen the impact of the third wave. In our next story, a worker at a top law factory in Malaysia has died due to COVID-19. The company confirmed the death on December 14th as the Malaysian government lifted a nearly one-month-long lockdown on top law factories. More than two dozen factories have been reporting massive outbreaks for more than a month. This has made them the largest COVID-19 cluster in the country. Shutdowns were first announced on November 23rd when nearly 5,000 employees were reported to have been infected with the virus. Moreover, a majority of the workers were migrants from South Asia and as such were forced to live in cramped dormitories. Yubraj Khatka, an employee in one of the factories, had revealed the unsafe working and housing conditions in a series of photographs leaked to labour activists in May. He was subsequently fired by Top Gun in September just before a massive outbreak was discovered among the workers. Migrant workers have been forced to work in dangerous conditions while companies such as Top Glove have raked in profits. The company recorded an increase of 355% in net profits by June and was controlling over a quarter of the global market. In our next story, we go to Peru where more than 5,100 women and children have been reported missing since January this year. These figures were published in a report by the Peruvian Ombudsman's Office on December 12th. The report titled What Happened to Them states that nearly 15 women go missing in Peru every day. In November alone, 190 women and 390 children were reported missing. As compared to the previous month, there was a 20% increase in the disappearances of women and a 12% increase in the disappearances of children. The departments with the highest missing cases include Lima, Arikepa, Kalao, Cusco and Piura. The report further pointed to the possible links between the disappearances and other cases of crimes committed against women and children. Out of the 127 cases of femicide reported over the past 11 months, 33 victims had been previously reported missing. The Ombudsman's Office had also stated that 188 instances of attempted femicide and 50 cases of death have been reported in 2020 so far. These cases are still under investigation and the precise causes of death are still uncertain. And in our final story, we, go, we take a look at the ongoing farmers' protests in India. There was a hunger strike stage yesterday as the protesters entered its third week and farmers are determined not to retreat until the government listens to their demand. Here is a video on the issue. been involved with uh, student activism and then with the Kisan Sabha now almost for 25 years. I have not seen this kind of a movement and the solidarity that is being generated around that movement. Uh, the uh, cross-class alliances, the kind of um, varied number of uh, different uh, organizations coming together. Uh, firstly, the different farmer organizations uh, under the All India Kisan Sangar's Coordination Committee the Punjab organizations and uh, 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 also the trade unions and different mass organizations, civil society groups 
coming out in support of the farmers this is something i have never seen before and if you see the uh, uh, farmers from punjab and haryana who are mainly at the two uh, tikri and um, singhu borders also those at the gazipur border they have all they know it is a long haul it is not something uh, they know that this uh, government is um, bent on pushing the corporate interest but they are also prepared to go uh, uh, till the uh, take the fight to the finish why did a government in the midst of a pandemic with you know second or third worst in the world with daily cases has a thousand things demanding its attention but it passed these laws there was a reason for it its calculation was that the farm that the farming community and the working class are at this moment helpless cannot hit back cannot organize they are cowed down by covid pulverized by the pandemic these guys can't hit back at us that was a terrible miscalculation logically it was a very very valid assumption to make but it misfired in that the farmers of punjab haryana and nearby states did not accept that assumption and flout it the second thing is that um I love this idea of consultation after the fact. Hmm. The consult even the government in its supposed discussion is admitting that these tra- that these amendments these new laws were enacted enacted for trade and commerce and any consultation that took place took place with the biggest of big businesses in this country. Hmm. It it did that. There was no consultation of farmers The government is committed to WTO and government is committed to Ambani Adani like corporates. So government can't go back uh, uh, from their words to these corporates. That is number one. But uh, that itself shows that us always, this government is uh, always keeping uh, in mind the profit and well-being of the corporates only. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah, Qatar, que vamos